morning's gospel concludes Jesus's I am the bread of life proclamation in chapter six of John's gospel. The lectionary seems intent upon us digesting the importance of what it means to know Jesus as the bread of life. As Reed reflected a few Sundays ago, Jesus responded to his followers questions and requests by peeling away layer after layer of what he meant by declaring himself the bread of life. And indeed that peeling away, that revealing has continued throughout chapter six, as we have heard over the past three Sundays. This morning's verses conclude Jesus's, with Jesus's challenging question. Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? True to character, it is Peter who first responds, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter's affirmation of faith is one that you and I need make as well. If Jesus is to be not only the bread of life, but our bread of life. So let's reflect back at what Jesus has revealed about himself. From the miracle that began chapter six, a boy's scant offerings of fish and barley loaves transformed into abundant meal for thousands to this morning's concluding verses where on behalf of the 12 disciples, Peter confesses Jesus as their bread of life. First, Jesus revealed the true motives of those who had followed him after the feeding of the 5,000. Very truly, I tell you, he said, you are not looking for, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Jesus rejected their hopes that he would continue to provide for their physical hunger as Moses had provided for their ancestors in the wilderness. Jesus had earlier rejected their political messianic expectations of him as well when some of the followers had sought to make him a king. To understand what it means to know Jesus as the bread of life requires his followers then and now to stop focusing on the material bread of life so the spiritual bread of life can be experienced. Do not work for food that perishes, Jesus said, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Isn't it interesting that the word bread in our culture is sometimes used to refer to money? We hear expressions like he's making a lot of bread so he can afford it, or she's not making enough bread to pay her rent. According to the slang dictionary, bread became a reference to money in the mid 19th century. And since bread was the traditional everyday necessity of life, to earn one's living was to earn one's bread. Therefore, bread became synonymous with money. This wanting, this searching after material bread, money, is the root of a lot of destructive behaviors in our culture, especially as it creates and fosters so many social inequalities and systemic injustices. It certainly gets in the way of being able to fully commit ourselves to Jesus's model of servanthood. We confess Jesus as our bread of life when our hearts and minds are clearly focused on him as the one we look to for strength, courage, and guidance in the face of life's many, many temptations and challenges. Jesus is our bread of life when we are not distracted or seduced by the lure of material bread. In his book entitled The Hebrew Lord, Bishop John Spong reflects on Jesus's identity as the bread of life. Quote, his claim to be the bread of life was a claim to be the power that fulfills the deepest needs of human life. 
Those needs do not change from age to age or with the passage of time. All life is lonely, separate, insecure. All life hungers and thirsts for wholeness, for being. All life seeks that elusive something that satisfies, but somehow no life seems to find it. It is not found in wealth. One only needs to ask the lonely, wealthy person to discover that. It is not found in social prestige or importance. One can ask the social pace setters of any city and they will verify that. It is not found in achieving power. One can ask the people whose decisions govern our nation, our state, or our city. It is not found in seeking escape from life's tensions. One only has to ask those who own a boat or a holiday haven or a mountain retreat and they will be eloquent witness that those do not finally satisfy. Life hungers for that food that does not pass away. The affirmation of our being, the power of love, the bread of life, end quote. If you remember back a couple of Sundays ago, some of the followers after Jesus knew him as son of Joseph, and so they questioned, how could he say that I am the bread of life that came down from heaven? To confess Jesus as the bread of life, we need to hold and balance his fully human and fully divine nature. Jesus is not simply another Moses or another great prophet. He is not simply one who proclaims the word of God. He is the word of God. As John's gospel declares in its opening chapter, replacing a birth story with a theology. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's only son, full of grace and truth. Jesus is our bread of life. When we deeply believe in him as the son of God, the incarnation, the embodiment of God, and when we also know him fully as one of us, human in sharing the experiences of our lives. The gospels help us recognize our humanity in Jesus as he experiences joy, rejection, loneliness, anger, sorrow, tiredness, and compassion. Jesus is our bread of life when we journey through life, knowing him as our constant companion, who understands perhaps better than we do ourselves, what we are facing in life, be that joys or sadness, hopes or fears. Jesus is our bread of life. When we feed on his example of life and are nourished by living according to what he has taught us to do. Jesus is our bread of life. When we receive his love, then offer it in kind to feed others who are spiritually hungry. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Many of his followers could not break through the barriers of their own literal and material thinking. And so they went away. Jesus selected images of eating his flesh, drinking his blood, which he knew would be offensive to most of his followers, but he chose these images to highlight the wholeness with which he wanted his example of life to be spiritually embraced and his teachings be fully digested. He wanted his followers to experience a full taste of God's love and the complete nourishment it offered. He used the symbols of flesh and blood to highlight the abiding, continuing, lasting, eternal relationship he was offering to those who believe in him. In earlier verses, and again in today's gospel, we heard Jesus say, no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Jesus' words point out that faith is a two-way interaction. Faith begins with God's invitation to us 
to enter into an intimate, loving relationship. And this relationship with God isn't one we are worthy of. It isn't something we achieve. It is God's own to offer. It is an invitation from God we can accept, ignore, or reject. We accept the invitation when we allow ourselves to be completely open to God's offer. When we are in relationship with God, in spite of all of our warts and all of our failures. It is this relationship established in God's unconditional love that becomes our bread of life. It is this unconditional love that offers us life eternal, freedom from what binds us to material desires and all our insecurities and fears. Jesus' question to his disciples is a direct challenge of their faith. Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Several times over the past few weeks, we have heard Jesus connect his identity as the bread of life with eternal life. If we were asked what is eternal life, most of us would say it was a state of being beyond this life. We talk about eternal life as something future, something that begins when we die. But if eternal is really eternal, that it involves life past, present, and future. By definition, the word eternal means lasting, or existing forever without end or beginning. When Jesus claims himself as the eternal bread of life, he identifies his oneness with God who is past, present, and future. The eternal nature of Jesus the Christ is proclaimed in the opening verses of John's gospel. Again, I quote, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, coexists with God. He is the eternal bread of life, past, present, and future. And when Jesus speaks of those who believe never dying, he is not talking so much about mortality as he is about spirituality. He is talking about life eternal, not in terms of life's quantity and unending progression of years, nor is he limiting eternal life to a state that begins beyond death. But rather, he describes eternal life as a quality of life here and now. In chapter 16 in John's Gospel, Jesus defines eternal life. And this, he says, is eternal life, that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom God has sent. The Reverend Washington Gladden, an early 19th century minister known for his preaching and social activism, tells a story of an evangelist preacher who followed a very solemn hymn's refrain, eternity, eternity, with the question, where will you spend it? The Reverend Gladden said the question conveyed the mistaken idea that eternity is a duration line wholly on the other side of death. The proper question, he said, is not where will you spend it, as if the entrance upon it were a future experience, but rather when and how are you spending it? Eternal life is something we participate in here and now, when we believe in Jesus as our bread of life. We confess Jesus as our bread of life and participate in his gift of eternal life when we carry out his ministry in the world, when we find Jesus in the faces of people we meet and in those we see who are suffering in any way. We confess Jesus as our bread of life and participate in his gift of eternal life. When we offer to others a true spirit of unconditional love and we call out inequities and promote justice. We are strengthened and nourished by Jesus our eternal bread of life. When we gather, be that physically or remotely, when we gather and feed upon him, 
in the bread and wine of the Eucharist, and when we leave to share his love whenever and however we can. Amen.